everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. How are you doing today? I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. In this video, I wanted to talk about the very common and also unsettling phenomenon of losing people as we enlighten. Before I even begin, I mean, drop down into the comments and let me know if you have actually lost friends, even family members, maybe even lovers, spouses, because of your spiritual path or your spiritual connection. I know that I have. I've lost a lot of people. And one thing I'll say is that it doesn't get easier. <laughs> You'd think that it would after losing so many people, but it really doesn't because a lot of times... You just don't see it coming, you know, and your energy falls out of connection with their energy and all of a sudden you find yourself alone again. That's happened to me many times during my spiritual walk and I know it's going to happen more as I continue because that's the nature of it. As we deepen our connection with spirit and as we expand our consciousness and our understanding, we take, we literally take in light. We take in this higher energy and our light quotient, our saturation rises and we become more and more and more of the light that we connect with. That's a frequency, you see. That's an actual vibration. It changes who it is that we are in our physical body, in our thinking and in our spiritual connection. And everybody is just energy. We are all just energy in a pattern that's moving around at a certain rate. But when your energy changes because of your light, because of your spiritual connection, you have to know that the people around you aren't having the same experience, are they? Usually not. They're still in their own understanding. Their energy, their literal frequency has stayed the same while ours has shifted. And one thing that happens when the shift takes place is that the disconnect becomes very uncomfortable, usually for both parties. John 1.1, 1, 1, and the light shines into the darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it. The darkness doesn't even know what to do with all that light. The people in your life in a lower vibration don't know what to do with all that light. And what does light do? It illuminates, it shines, it shows things. The darkness can't hide in it. And so when you walk into a space with your old friend, you're bringing all your light and it's shining on them. And it's showing them all the things that need to be brought into alignment with that light. And people aren't ready to heal. People aren't always ready to expand their consciousness and learn about this divine, beautiful universe in which we live. People like Staying where they are. I know we all know people who are just as happy as they can be without progressing. But that's not what you're doing. And your light is actually uncomfortable to them. And when somebody's uncomfortable, they have uncomfortable reactions. And when we don't understand something, we fear it. Why is she so different? Why is she talking about the flower of life? Why is she telling me how to meditate right now? Like, I don't understand that. And when they don't understand it, they fear it. And people who respond from fear usually respond badly. And this is why we have people who shift out of our lives. And this is why spirit or the universe often requires us to move away from relationships in order for us to remove the anchor or the tether to that lower level and move on to occupy the higher level we are being called into. No judgment here. Levels are just levels. They're arbitrary. They are where our energy dwells. But we can't stay attached to lower levels in, if we really want to ascend and shift and raise our vibration. We have to be willing to untether ourselves. And that can be from work career. It can be from geography, locations, houses. It can be from people. It is often from people. Let me tell you something. It's my bubbies. I have been walking this path for many years and I have found myself very lonely, very lonely, even sometimes within the company of my peers, because even if they're, they are enlightening. Even if your friends are on the same path, that doesn't mean they are where you are in your own development. And some of these people even fall away. I've seen it time and time again. Really good friends in the spiritual work will fall away as you continue to shift. And they're shifting too, and they will attract new people as well. 
but it can be lonely out there. This is one of the main reasons I created the Lightworkers Lab, which is my online spiritual community. It's free. We've got almost 10,000 people there. We curate our membership. We do not accept ridiculous behavior in the space, even though it's a Facebook group. And I know uh, those are usually dumpster fires. Our group is not because our foundation is love and non-judgment. And you get to be exactly where you want to be. You could be a Christian and be in my group. You could be a pagan and be in my group. You can be an atheist or an agnostic, somebody who's just curious and absolutely be in my group. I created the community that I needed for myself because I did feel isolated and I did feel lonely. As the clearing out's taking place, before we occupy the new level, it can be a little bit disconcerting how alone we really are in 3D reality. Of course, we're never alone. Not really. We're always attended by spirit. So I want to give you that good news. Even though things clear out, new energy, new people, new opportunities do come in. I want to end this video by actually addressing a question that came in that I just love because I hear it so often and I want to share it with you. This came from Myri. She says, how do you deal with family members who don't believe and or are skeptical of the life you're pursuing with spirit? What's the best plan of action? This kind of falls into the same category of what we're talking about. Thanksgiving's coming up here in America. Christmas is coming up, of course, around the world. There's a lot of us visiting family. And you can attest that our family doesn't necessarily know what's going on with you. Maybe, Myri, your family doesn't understand this transformation that you're undergoing. They don't understand the words that you're using. They don't get how you're describing things. And so don't. Don't. Yes, my recommendation here is to just be quiet. Let your message, let your passion be your energy. In other words, just be love. Here again, let's go back to A Course in Miracles, shall we? I have come into this room to bless this room, there is no other reason for me to be here. I have come into this Thanksgiving dinner to bless this Thanksgiving dinner. There is no other reason for me to be here. And if you're talking about all the stuff that you're doing in a language that might be unsettling and even antagonistic to people who don't understand it, then the answer is just don't do that. Be love. Believe me. When someone is ready and they encounter someone who is love, and who is running divine energy and information, they will approach you. They'll want to know more. Like moth to a flame. What's going on with you, Myrie? You're so different. You seem happy. Why? They'll ask the questions. They'll want to know more. But unfortunately, most people won't. They don't want to have anything to do with that until they're ready. And so don't say anything. So many of us come out of organized religion, and I was an evangelical Christian, and we were taught to go out into all of the world and proselytize, tell our story, try to convert people. I know that more than many because I was a missionary. I was a missionary to Fiji, to Tonga, went to Samoa. I was also uh, a missionary in my own community. I was a street preacher, for God's sakes. I was that obnoxious person up on a couple of pallets on Kalakaua Boulevard yelling to everybody about Jesus because... Of course, if I yell it, they'll receive it. <laughs> so shocked when people got angry at me because I didn't understand. I thought I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. But now in my older age, I realize that proselytization is distasteful. It's rude. It's forcing the field. You're trying to force somebody to open up before their time. Don't worry about that. That's not your job. That's creator's job. That's the universe's job. And the universe has that person in the perfect divine timeline. You don't have to force that field. So just be quiet. Don't share everything because they're going to be confounded. They're not going to understand and they will likely react from fear. Why do that to them? Why do that to yourself? You don't need to. Be the love that you say you are connected to. And on that note, I hope this video has helped you. Please, again, drop down in the comments. Let me know if you've lost people because I, I read all my comments and I'm always interested to hear. And until the next video, please know that I have nothing but love for you. Bye, guys.